Happy Pipto. <laughs> Happy Pipto. That's where we ended off. Yes, that's Hugs right. and kisses. Holy well, Spirit. Holy gives Spirit, a hug. hugs and kisses. Welcome to session two. Uh, you know, uh, this is an interesting, going to be a really good teaching. We've got Dr. Raphael Ajay and Moni here from um, Alder Grove, British Columbia. Yes. And they're going to be teaching on the Holy Spirit. Anything you want to know about the Holy Spirit, we're going to we're going to be taught this afternoon and tomorrow afternoon. That's right. Uh, so keep yourselves tuned in. So this is Apostolic Resurrection Life uh, Center. You know, when I say that, uh, this is the ARC kind of training that we do on Saturday afternoons uh, year, throughout the year where we get into in-depth teaching so that you have a strong foundation, strong foundation on the principles and precepts of the Holy Spirit, the blood of Jesus, and the authority that we walk in in the Father. Mm -hmm. So, that's what we're going to be doing this, this afternoon. Yep. And uh, the scripture I have to start off with, I, you probably got something. I've got, yes, I do. Okay. I'll get into that after you're done. And then... So, Acts chapter 2, verse 1, it says, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Well, we're in all in one accord in one place. Now, wherever you are out there, you're in our place. And we're in your place. We're in one accord in the Holy Spirit. Now, Pastor Ralph, he preached last night and spoke about, you know, you must be born again. And that we must be one with the Father, that Jesus wanted us to be one with the Father. Um, so that we'd be all, all in all together. And that's what being all together in one accord. And then verse... And, Verse 2 says, Suddenly there, there came a sound from heaven as uh, a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Well, wherever you're sitting, whatever house you're in, you're God's house, and you're dwelling in the house of God. And we're expecting the Holy Spirit just to pour out into your homes and here uh, throughout this uh, Pentecost weekend and drinking the new wine. Verse 3, it says, Then there appeared to be on them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. So we just pray for the manifestation of the Holy Spirit and fire upon each and every one of us, here and out there, wherever you may be. And be hungry for it. Be hungry for the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Because the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us. In Romans 8.11. Uh, Pastor Ralph talked about that last night. But we need to be hungry for more. And God wants to pour out more. Because he saved the best wine till now. Yep. And that, that wine is very flammable. It's hot stuff. It really? is wine that is ready to go kaboom. And verse 4 it says, And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So this is this Pentecost weekend. And uh, for those that don't understand the Holy Spirit... For those that don't uh, know the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit or the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit, we're going to be teaching about this all weekend and celebrating in worship. So yep. be turned, tuned in and uh, be excited about what the Holy Spirit's going to do in your life. Amen. All yeah. right. There. Thank you. Yeah. So we, again, we just want to appreciate um, Raphael and Momi and, you know, and having Jordan with them as a little family. So we just want to appreciate all that they've done in preparation for these times, these meetings and these days. And we want to just, um, we want to honor the man and woman of God. We want to honor the ministry for, for TSMI. And I'm going to go over, you know, a few, and then I've got, you know, I'm going to go over a few little sort of housekeeping, suggested housekeeping um, information items. And we'll, I'm going to do, we'll start this off with, each meeting, but um, there's some on the tables for those who may join in later. And um, so, so it's just your basic before we get, you know, before we get too far into it. There will be coffee and tea available in the center space just as you come in before you enter the sanctuary. Um, there's going to be that can be available for any time throughout the meetings. And um, however, what we would ask is that you know if you're going out during a meeting time or during a teaching time we would ask that you would that you would just respect those who are in the sanctuary we respect the 
the ministers who are, who are ministering and teaching and just to respect those that are attending within so that if there's any conversations or so on, if you can, save it to the break time. There will be break uh, time. That Those are great times for chatting and so on. And during the break times, there's also going to be you know, a few, a few uh, refreshments or snacks, if you will. Um, but we'll save that for break time. But again, coffee, um, there will be tea available, which is not at this moment, but it will be available a bit later. Um, and then what we want people to know is that meals for throughout the conference um, for, for Friday, for Saturday, the meals and you know Sunday morning breakfast or whatever, meals are on your own. So that's for you to look after yourselves. And um, we can recommend a couple of restaurants and, and uh, a couple of other places if you wanted to check them out, you know, to go and have your food or, or to pick something up and have a picnic or whatever. Meals, so there's the Summer Shack and there's Shannon's Creations. Those restaurants, both of them are directly on 3rd Avenue. So for those, um, for those that when you're wanting to leave and find the, the two places, you would go east on 3rd. And for those who need their rights and lefts, it's turn left onto 3rd as you exit. And on Main Street, on the corner of Main Street, that's where you find Shannon's Creations. And then further down, closer towards the number 5, on your right-hand side there too, there's the Summer Shack. So that's where you may want to check that out for food, for your meals. And also, uh, there is a subway, if people prefer to have a subway, sandwich, that kind of thing, that is east on First Avenue, just right across from the medical center and the hospital. Um, Sunday lunch will be here after service and available. Um, please consider bringing some snack foods with you if you're coming and, <laughs> to, sh and to share. And so um, it will be a lunch style, the lunch will be a picnic style lunch. Sandwiches, veggies, fruit, that type of thing. And also of note, just as you get your coffee or tea or that type of thing, there is a jar there for donation offerings for the food or the coffee that uh, please feel free to put, your, put an offering into the uh, jar to help cover food costs and coffee and so on. So we'd appreciate that. Now, I'm also, can I, can I speak now? well, is it a bit? only a little bit. We want to allow I know. I the teacher to teach. We, uh, Roy and I, you know, the two R's, the RR's, we set up tables for picnics outside, both front and back. Right. So uh, you can go up to the front with the back yes. and have picnic on a picnic table. When you're having your break time, if you want. Yep. Yep. That's right. And that's good stuff. Because now the weather is not so cold. In fact, it's hot. But for those who are feeling chilly in an air-conditioned environment, you can warm up by going outside. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what I do want to also, we need to also consider um, blessing, you know, blessing our speakers, blessing the ministers that come to be with us throughout this weekend. And, and I'm going to, you will see, you know, at the front in front of this little, this little table set up here, there is a, a wicker basket or a, you know, a decent sized basket. And at the back on the table back there, there is a, um, a box container that's got a slit in it. You can, if you prefer to put your offerings or donations into there, you can. There we've got, you can use debit or credit, uh, credit cards. We have our machine back here. And there's always the online for payments online, PayPal, or on the website you can go and you've got options there to check out. I'm going to take um, a little bit of scripture for today, just for this afternoon, and then we'll go, maybe, you know, we'll bring this up again at other meetings. But, um, and this is from 2 Corinthians 9, and I'm taking it from the Passion Translation. And the title on this, the way they've got it titled, is The Offering for Needy Believers. We are all needy in one shape or another. So, verse 1 it says, and actually there's no, and we know that amongst us, those who are with us for the most part, there's no need to write to you about the contribution for the holy believers, you know, in our home environment here. But for those that may be visiting or in other places or in other, you know, even online and throughout the world, but we already know that you're on board and you're eager to help. And so this is, you know, we want to make note of that, that we appreciate all of that. 
And in verse 6, um, we're going to, that's titled Hilarious Generosity. And so I'm just going to read a couple of verses here, I think. So it just says, and here's my point. A stingy sower will reap a meager harvest, but the one who sows from a generous spirit will reap an abundant harvest. No, it's not from your pocket. It's not from your bank account necessarily. It's a generous spirit. The stingy sower is kind of refers to ones who've got lots in their lots in their storehouse. They've got lots of stuff there, and yet they still maybe only give just a little bit, whereas they have ample that they could share. But that's okay because everybody needs to be led of the Lord as well. In verse seven, let giving flow from your heart, not from a sense of religious duty. Heaven forbid. Let it spring up freely from the joy of giving. All because God loves hilarious generosity. Mm-hmm. And if we were to look at, you know, like, how does that work? He loves generous, you know, hilarious generosity. Well, in Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 8, it says there are seven things in the Bible that God loves. One, the resident foreigner or immigrant. So, you know, when we have immigrant people come into our land, he loves them that have not necessarily been born in Canada. He loves, so we need to consider, this is one of the seven things that God loves. Secondly, righteousness in our affairs with others. Do we treat each other and others fairly and in a righteous manner with justice? Or do we take for granted and uh, use and abuse others? But God loves, God loves those who are righteous in their affairs with others. And thirdly, he loves justice. Fourth, the gates of Zion, his righteous people, he loves, absolutely loves. Sixth, a hilarious or cheerful giver. Look at that. That's mentioned right there. So, you know, you don't just make the stuff up. This is the word of God. And seven, he loves those that he disciplines or he corrects. So if we really and truly want to appreciate the full, the fullness of the Father's love towards us, then we need to look at those things and take it seriously. And so with that, we're just going to invite, or did you have something else? But I think we want to invite Dr. Raphael um, and Momi when she's able, you know, sometimes uh, you know, as a parent, you you know, children need looking after and, and cared for. So, um, but we're going to invite Dr. Raphael to come and to bring the word, the message, the teaching that the Lord has given. It is very foundational, and it is something, you know, we build. We have to have a strong and firm foundation in order to continue to grow in, and not have little pieces that fall off as are, we're walking with God. And it's line upon line, precept upon precept. And that's why these, these, these teachings and the, this, this word and message is so important to be grounded in the word of God and what he says and how he fleshes that out. And so we just want to... So their <clears throat> ministry is TSMI. Mm-hmm. And uh, they have some wonderful books that they've written. And um, we've known uh, Dr. Raphael and Momi Ajay for over 10 years. I think it's about 12. And uh, so it's, uh, it's, we just love being together. We love barbecuing together, and we love laughing together, yes, and we indeed. love praying together and blowing the shofar. So, yes. And anything to do with uh, advancing the kingdom of God, we love doing that mm-hmm. together. Yeah, and I want to also just bring to your attention that one of Dr. Raphael's books, he brought a few with him, um, broken jars can still carry oil. There, there's some of the books at the back that, um, if you would like to purchase, they are twenty dollars per book. So just so you know that, and don't forget to uh, get one before you leave. Okay. Okay. Lord bless you and welcome, Dr. Raphael. Blessings. Amen. Well, are you zeroed in right on Jesus? No, Jesus. Jesus! Okay, man. Okay. <laughs> okay.
Turn it on. Might have to have Holy Spirit. Hug it's pretty on. hot. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's good to be here again. Thanks for having us here. Um, welcome, everybody. Welcome those who are here. I can't see your, your faces, but I know that you're there somewhere. And I'm happy that you're here. I know that God's going to bless you. I know that you're here, you're, you're, you're here to receive something very powerful. I know that we're here. Thank you for coming. God bless you all. And I pray God meet you at your point of need in Jesus' yes, name. Sure. Amen. Mommy and, um, Mommy and Jen are here. We brought them in the back. They'll probably say hi to you later. But today, we just want to um, thank you for having us. And we're happy to be here. Father, I thank you for this meeting, Lord, that you have ordained it for a purpose and for a reason. And we are here because you have an assignment for this area, and we don't take it for granted at all. And I'm so thankful for being here. I just feel humbled to be here, and I thank you, Father, for what you're about to do in the name of Jesus. You know, when we speak God's word, it goes in the atmosphere and does things for us. It actually goes there and does stuff in the air. And so we believe that the word we speak, even after we leave, is left in the atmosphere doing work. His words never die. They're powerful. <laughs> um, let me tell you a story. We came in from we came in last night from Vancouver, and we we got to Winnipeg, and I started we started coming down. It was so it was so easy. We got you know, got out of the out of the, out of the plane, got the car. Then it took a long time, you know, trying to figure out where the um, the child lock was because you have to do the key and all that. <laughs> so we figured out that out, and then. Uh, we, we kind of did some stuff around there. We, sat, we left and started coming down. And as we came down, I thought that this is strange. You see, I've been in Saskatchewan. I, I live there and I understand the weather, I understand the fog, and I understand all the kind of stuff. But I couldn't see where I was going. Mm. It was kind of very, very dark and kind of foggy. Huh. And I started to get worried. But I, I started to feel very, very funny that, hey, what's going on? It's a, it's a new car. You know, it's a rental car. And I thought that what's happening as we kept on going, cars were going faster than, you know, I was going around the, you know, around the speed, but they were going quite, so they're, they're going quite fast. How can they see? And it's, it's not, it's not, it's not winter. And I thought that, why are my lights on my, on my steering not on? Mm. I said, well, we're checking what's, maybe something's wrong there. And then finally I thought that after about an hour, and a half, I said, let me just check around. And so it has this, Oh, no, this is not we can turn around. Uh -huh. Because you see, in BC, all the cars, the lights come on automatically by law. You put lights on, the lights are on all the time. Uh -huh. But here, I guess you have to put the light on yourself. I didn't know that. Oh. So when I turned that, boom! Uh -huh. The lights came on in the car, and I couldn't see. And I thought, whoa! Oh, oh, oh. I've been driving on beam all this time, you know? You know, okay. I, you know, I, you know, once in a while, I, you know, I, you know, I put no food, so I, I'm taking up food, you know, just to switch, just to see where I was going. I said, have I been on Dean all this time? And you know, life makes a difference. Amen. <laughs> it sure does. Life makes a difference. And so, you know, I, I, I tell you that today, that light of God today makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And so expect God's word today to yeah. open, you know, open you out. We're talking about the, the fruits and the gifts. You see, gifts are given. The fruits are born or pushed out, you know, um, mm. sometimes painfully. Mm. A child comes out, you know, you push it out by force. Yes. I hear it's sometimes painful. I see it's sometimes painful. <laughs> you hear. I, <know. laughs> I hear told and I see, so I believe what I see. But they're pushed out, you know. And, you know, and, and you, you know, sometimes the teeth grin, you know, you know, you know. Or when you want to love somebody, or when you ought to love somebody, but you really want to just walk away, because you're angry, mm. but say I can love him. Because that's a, that is when you. Mm. So today we're going to talk about the fruits. We're, we're going to release you into your gift and and and, and, and then believing God the best we can. We'll direct you into your fruits in the name of Jesus. Mm. See the part A of this conference is like physical. You know we had to say about he was born again. I couldn't come and say but it was I was a powerful meeting. About you must be born again. That's basically that's what you do to enter the kingdom. Right. Today is still physical. It's more like how do you bear fruits? Then we'll learn later about the anointing oil, and that moves us like a struggle to the spiritual, the gifts, mm -hmm. then the expression of the gifts. 
on Saturday night, I believe, and Sunday morning, and Sunday night and Wednesday night. So expecting the power of God to move in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Excuse me. <coughs> Amen. You know, some time ago, I was in South Africa. I was I was in Bible school then. And I went to a, to a church called Rima Bible Church. And I was in Rima Bible Training Center in South Africa at that time. And the wholesale leader had, had Dalmatians. They were beautiful dogs. Beautiful, big, white, with nice black dogs. I just love them. <laughs> <laughs> I just always, fight, and these were big, you know. I just always fancied them. I love zebras. You have zebras, there you go. <laughs> And so what happens, he has a meter. And he says, Shango, a girl, he says, you want, you want a puppy? I said, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm on my way right away. So I went down to his place, and I saw the, 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 the litter, the puppy, so, you know, you know, and, and, and I was like, they're kind of cute. They're kind of cute, but my face was kind of crestfallen. He said, why do you look happy? Uh... So what's wrong? Um, and I was trying to be diplomatic, but I said, "Well, I, I, you know, I wanted, you know, some dark spots on them, <laughs> not these white ones. <laughs> I didn't really want a white dog. I wanted the dog with dark spots." But he started to laugh. He says, "As they grow older, <laughs> the spots will appear. They come out white." So, oh. So my face changed, and I picked up Zita, and went on with Zita, and later I got, I got bored later, but I started with Zita, and, that, and Zita was a lot of work, you know, lovely dog, a lot of work, yes. a lot of work, so, um, so, you see, in our lives, the flesh or negative parts in our lives just says that we're not bearing fruits, we don't get angry at ourselves, it just means that we're not bearing fruits yet. So we don't give up. We must allow things mm -hmm. to change. Right. You see, the answer is to bear fruit. The dog we see is not grown up yet. Zita was still a white female. But she was going to have these beautiful dots later. Mm -hmm. Or spots, whatever you want to call them later. Um, you don't shoot the dog. Right. You know, about talks about how perfect law cast out fear because fear has torment. Yes. So we don't shoot the dog for not bearing spots. We we kind of give it time. Right. We kind of give it some slack. Let it grow. Don't shoot yourself down. The white boy always do this. It's all right. Uh -huh. It's okay. You, you <laughs> it's okay. Amen. You know you know you have to understand that there's a season for everything. Let's go to Galatians 5. Open your Bibles to Galatians 5, verse 16. And we shall begin to open the God's Word today because it's all about the Word. It says here, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. If you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. So if you walk in the Spirit, the dog will grow. <laughs> Pardon my phone, but, but you, you know, you know, if, you know, if you're led by God, it will grow. Because it says, if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. Now, verse 19 says, the works of the flesh are evidence. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentious, contentious, to beg your pardon, jealousies, adverse and wrath, um, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revilers, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told in the time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. God's kingdom is righteousness, peace, yeah. and joy in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And we inherit that kingdom when we begin to walk in the fruits of 
of the Spirit. And we also know that we enjoy the fullness of God in that kingdom. And also when we die and go to heaven, we are guaranteed when we have the fullness of that working in our lives. But the white dove is just shown its breed. I would say that God gives a pure breed, never junk. So God never gives us junk. I know I'm using a dog, but please, I'm, I'm not calling you dog, so make your pun. I'm not saying you're a dog. I'm just, Ooh, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just using that to explain that, that God doesn't give us just. Whatever in our lives, whatever parts of our lives, whatever, just the parts of our lives, they're all pedigree. You're all quality. God never makes junk. And if God says that, I don't want you to do those things, it means that we're equipped in our DNA not to do those things. Amen. We just don't get it yet. But today you'll get it. Is it but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with his passion and desires. Let us if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit, verse twenty six. Let us not become conceited Provoking one another and envying one another. Galatians 5 26. Frederick says that against such things, there is, if you're working with the love and the peace and all those things, that against such there is no law. When you are walking in the spirit, there is no law. And we ought to learn how to work in the spirit. And let this things flow in our lives. You know, Mother's Day this year was interesting. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know about my tip, but you know, you know, in BC it was cold. I'm sorry, it was it was hot, so I say. It was really, really hot. I mean, it was it was hot. It was just it was it was so hot. And my, and my son said to my wife that, you know, Mom, what should we do for you? Mother says, You all go out and you know go and have dinner and go. Walk in the, you know, go and walk in front of Langley and go to the Magic Park and go and go and go to church in the evening. Mm -hmm. She said, no. What do I want to do? I, I want to plant in my garden oh. more, more trees. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I want to Appreciate change my bed. That, 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 that looks like hard work. <laughs> like, so he says, no, I want, I, want, I want you all come to my garden. So he's why the other one came to the garden to walk in the garden and to till the garden and all that stuff. And we were sweating like, like, we were sweating like, like, whatever, whatever, what, what do you, we were sweating like that. It, and we're digging holes, we're sweating, we're panting, and we're full of flowers, we're, we're kind of, you know, doing all sorts of things. It was just crazy. <laughs> the planting was a lot of work. It was, you know, I mean, it was, um, it was hard. Very hard. You know that, in Calvary, Jesus Christ planted for us. He dug our gardens for us. He worked hard and fixed that garden. Mm -hmm. It's planted. Just like Adam had a garden, he went and he planted for us in the garden. I'm saying things that God just told me. These are things that are not yet for me yet. This is not what I read anywhere. But the Lord said that, that in Calvary, he planted his garden for us. Yes, when, I, when I'm told, can I speak? I ask him, what should I speak? You know, these are fundamental things that have been learned all our lives, but I said, God, what is your take from this season about this? Right. He said, I'll give you a new take, Shane. In Calvary, he planted for us. You know, when we plant those trees and those that flower, we don't flower them. We don't touch them. Right. It's automatic. Mm -hmm. That's right. We relax and let the DNA in the leaves do the work. Yes. If you buy an Alsatian puppy, you can never get a Dalmatian. If your puppy is a Saint Bernard, it can never be a Rottweiler. Yeah. It's exactly what you bought. Yeah. You might not be sure when it comes. Of course, you'll be sure when it comes. I feel the color. But there are times when you're not sure what it's going to be. But when it comes and when it grows, you will know exactly what you're planting. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, Jesus planted for us. Galatians 2 says, verse 3, says that I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that lives 
inside me. <clears throat> Do you hear that? Galatians 2, verse 20. It says, I am crucified with Christ. No other less I live, yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. And the life that I live, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who first loved me and he gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. Because if righteousness comes by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. If, 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 if my walking in the fruit of the Spirit comes by a legalistic way of doing it, then I'm frustrating the grace of God. Yes. Because that's where we miss it. Yeah, we ought to walk in the fruit of the Spirit. We should. But we sometimes try and do it in our strength. That's right. Yeah. And we struggle. Yes. Now that dimension and the sports will come. We relax and let the daily do the work. The beautiful max will come. We don't fret. We don't kill the dog. You know, when we there, I say, okay, thank you for the dog. I take the dog home. I want to get him. I just shoot it. I <laughs> say, look at you. He gave me a gallant bad man. He gave me a white I asked him for a transition. He gave me a, a white dog. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Boom. You know, you know because we just, I can't tell him that. But, 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 but I said, I said, hey, I, I was very, very nice. I said, I actually just, I, I, I didn't really want a white dog. You know, I was being very, very diplomatic. You know, yeah, yeah. it was years ago. It was, uh, it was. You learned lots of things. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, you know I, I was like, I didn't really want a white dog, you know. Said, oh, no, 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 don't worry. Now, what if I took the dog like some of us do? Right. I don't like myself. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we count ourselves. Yes. We want to kill ourselves. We want to yes. take pills because we hate ourselves. Yep. We don't see what we see in the mirror. We don't like it. Right. Because there's always a, a mirror of the world yeah. that tells us what we should look like, how we should speak, right. how we should behave, what we are. Yes. And we follow the pattern of the world, and that is the pattern of ourselves. And we can never catch up. Mm-hmm. It's always somebody who has the biggest, the bigger voice. Yeah. What is beautiful here today might not be beautiful in another country. You just have to change and see what people have different thoughts of what beauty is. And in some countries, when you have knock knees, that's the best you can be like. And isn't that interesting? Yeah. In others, it's not the best you can be like. In some, they say, you have to be fat and round and, you know, cubby. In some, you have to be thin. So you have to be thin like those who are walking the car walk. So you don't eat. You starve because you've got to be thin like them. In some nations, say, ah, this one, ah. This one is time. Who's time? This one. <laughs> this one is time. <laughs> Yeah. See, this one, because they're not, oh, this one's too thin. But in some countries, that is wonderful. Oh, you're, oh, you're a size 8. Oh, you're, and, you know, so, you know, we, we have these warped ideas based on what yes. we have said. That's right. The it's the person with yeah. the greatest voice that speaks and makes us believe most lies. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. We're talking in Africa some time ago that um, when you have a baby, the breast milk is bad. What? The breast yeah. milk. Thou shalt not give breast milk. So we we have breastfed all our lives. So, oh, there's a new, there was about the 60s or what it was. Yeah. Hey, that is not good. Yeah. So we had to buy powdered right. milk right. and feed the babies. Because the whole world was in powdered milk. It was more convenient. Right. It was more posh. It was more kosher. Yes. And after we had done some studies, mm-hmm. that says, oh, sorry, we missed it. Yeah. Actually, breast milk is best. Yeah. So let's go back to breast milk now. Right. There's a more bonding. The baby feels better. It's much more healthier than the than the part than the um uh-huh. than the artificial milk and all that right. stuff. But for years we we're told that breast milk is not good. Yeah. So some companies made a killing. Yes. From the milk. Yes. The powder milk. Yes. Now, so I'm I'm saying that people can say something or sell us a lie. Yes. Based on how powerful they can speak. That's right. It's not always the truth. That's right. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled in the heavens. Mm-hmm. That's why I believe the Bible. I believe that if we keep our lives on the word of God, yeah. it will be well with us. Yes. Amen. Amen. Let that dog go. Don't labor with the dog. Mm-hmm. Don't call yourself an ugly and base and bad. Right. No, you're not. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. That's right, man. Marvelous are his works, and your soul yes. must know very well that you are wonderfully made. Yes. Until you know that, 
you keep on struggling. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I some years ago when I had um, I said some years ago, quite <laughs> a few years ago when I was um, a, couple a couple of years ago I was yeah, yeah. I was kind of um, basically <laughs> heading the department of the Deliverance of the Church and um, uh, it was it was a big church. church. Sorry, general Deliverance. Deliverance. And, 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 and you know it wasn't a church and it was it was some years back and. <clears throat> And um, one guy came one day and said, Pastor, please pray for me. They came from all over to church. All over, all over from, even outside Nigeria, they came for prayers. I said, what's wrong with you? He said, I smoke. Please cast out the demon of smoking out of me. It's in my book, The Broken Giant. It's also in the other book called The Father's Cover. He said, please cast out the, the spirit of smoking out of me. I said the story a lot because it was it was a life changing for me. And I said, sure, let's go. So I said, I said, God, 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 God. I said, always ask God. I said, God, um, I have to have a design of what's going on, Lord. The Lord says, well, I have got from the Lord a word. He said that, tell him that he's trying too hard to stop smoking. Mm -hmm. He must stop trying <laughs> right. to stop smoking. So I said, I said, bro, he said, God says, you're trying too hard to stop smoking. Stop trying to stop smoking. Uh -huh. I thought I he was kind of it's kind of crazy. And I also thought, if you're not trying to stop smoking. It's driving. Hey? I mean, just be hard. Like, but he says, no, just. And then the Lord, for years, I, I, I battled. And when I was in UK, I was a pastor. I was pastor in the UK. We had, we had we, we pastor a church, our church in the UK. Before I lost and leave and then go back to my place in Canada. As a pastor in the UK, I was one day I was crying to God. I said, God, I want to be so holy. I want to breathe and I feel, you know, like, you know, my, my very shadow is all the sick, you know, like, but I want to have the glory of God in me all the time. I want to be very, very, very holy. And as I was crying to God on my, on my super, I thought I would I I I I just suddenly see angels and the oil being poured on my head. I thought I would see the power of God coming forth. He said, God told me that, stop trying. No, it's not He said, the more you try to become what you already are, mm. the more you become what you're not. Amen. He says, the more you try to become what you are already, the more you become what you're not. And then suddenly in my mind, click, 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 click. I remember that man who was trying to stop smoking. Mm -hmm. He wasn't a smoker. He was a saint. And when he embraces that he's a saint, the smoking disappears. And today, back to the guy, back to Mom's garden I talked about earlier. Yes, he was talking about you in your garden. <laughs> I woke up in the morning, and the sons of flowers coming out. Beautiful flowers popping up. Came out of his own. You know, in a flower. You know, working hard to be a Christian will take your whole life gardening and you will never achieve it. You keep trying hard to be the perfect Christian and you never get to that measure. Right. Because it says that we do not frustrate the grace of Christ. God. Because if righteousness comes by the law, then Christ's death was a waste of time. Right. The garden has been planted at Calvary. The working is done by the word we speak and by the Holy Spirit. We just chill out and go to bed. Mm -hmm. The fruits will show when you go to rest. The Lord told me today that I should say that the fruits will show when you go to rest. Once again, the fruits will show when you go to rest. You got to understand the power of rest. We'll take a short break now. I want, to, I want you to go to look at areas in your life you know, when you get Galatians 5, 19 and 21, where do I need to apply Galatians 2, 22? That's the faith Jesus has in his work for me. What areas of Galatians 5, 19 to 21 must I apply Galatians 2, 20, 
She make it work. I'll give you an example. If, 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 if in, in those lists it was, um, it was um, whatever, whatever. Let's look at them again. Let's say it was, um, yeah, let's say even fornication and adultery, let's, let's start with them. That, that's something that, that, that happens a lot. Let's say that was an issue that, that, that we have as a, as, as a problem in our lives. And Galatians 2 says that I'm crucified with Christ. How do I apply that to that area? So out of those 18 things that I mentioned that were the works of the flesh, which areas do you struggle? Mm. And where do you have to apply the word of God today to change it? Okay. Make a quick note, and then we'll go on. A quick, very quick note about that. And, 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 and those, those things are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, Abbas of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, rebellions, and the like. Which of those things are not right in our lives? Just do that quickly, and we'll continue. Let's do a couple of minutes, and we'll continue right away. You can grab a cup of coffee, that's fine. Yeah. I'll grab some water in the meantime. Okay. Maybe a little break. Oh, okay. Okay, I hope, that's, I hope that first part was helpful for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we're going to the next session right away. Is a time? Um, once again, Joshua says that I do not frustrate the grace of God. So look at those parts that you don't apply face to. That you are pure pedigree. So I use that word for us, but that you that you are the best, and you're what he says. You are. We talk about the Mother's Day garden, about the day in that does the work while we we just chill out. You know, in the garden, in one of my properties, we need to plant trees. And the guy, it's a, it's a, just land. So we have, we, we have, we have a lot, we have a lot of work going around the whole world right now, and um, we have to get trees somewhere. And but there's no water on, on the land. Yeah. And the guy was telling us that we, we got to dig, uh, you know, till the ground here, till the ground there, and then plant the trees here. Mm. But we need water. Mm-hmm. He said, I will not plant the trees without water because they're very, very big trees and all that stuff, and so. He wants to have water on the ground and all the kind of stuff they do. And um, you see, there's an environment that makes it easy for the plants to grow and the trees to grow. Some like the sun, some like the shade. Some can't, some can't even look at the snow. <laughs> they can't smell the snow, they die, you know. 
I, I went to the store the other day, I was going to buy it. I said, this is class, I love it. Can I buy them? Are they okay for the... He says, no, 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 no. They, they cannot chop it. No, no, they got to be in the house. In winter, I would just kill them like that. So they can't stand the snow at all. And there's a right earth, the right moisture. It's not anything that I've got to be careful but the plants have become their best. The right kind of fertilizer, the right kind of, kind of yes. um, you know, the nutrients and all that stuff. Just like animals also, yes. they, 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 they all eat differently. And Galatians says here in verse 5, the 5 verse 13, that this I say then, walk in the streets and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The purpose of today's talk or session is to help us to enter the realm where we are bearing fruits yeah. without having to the stress of how do I do this? Mm -hmm. Relaxing and letting God help us to bear the fruits. Because yes. we have this error of trying to bear fruits, mm -hmm. not realizing that the fruits are not for us to bear, but just to accept and receive. It says here that walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So it means that tells me that there's a way to be free of all those things. I don't know where you are today. You might be deep in addictions, whatever it is you're involved in, it doesn't matter. It says you shall not fulfill. If God was say, see, let me backtrack a little bit. Until you realize that God's word is the ultimate, it's tough to help you. If God's word might or might not be, then I'm even wasting my time, and you're probably wasting your time. You get to get to a point where God's word is, is it. It says, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. I'm not a way, I'm not a truth, and I'm not a life. Right. I am the way. So if you're a child of God, you must realize that he is the way. He is the truth. Mm -hmm. He is the life. Right. He's not a rule. He's not a ruler. Yeah. He's a rule. By which all rulers must measure up to that rule. There are rules that are standard. Yeah. When you make a ruler, it's going to measure up to the level of that ruler. If you say this is 10 kilograms, it must measure up to the international standard of what 10 kg is. If you change the kg to what you think is right, you will think. So if I go and buy gas, and you tell me I'm buying 2 liters, but you put it to 1.5 liters, mm -hmm. and the, your tanks, your, your, your gauge says 2 liters, you're a cheat. You can't go to jail because you are, you, 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 that, that, that's, that's fraud. Right. Because the gauge for 2 liters is standardized worldwide. You cannot change it. That's right, that gauge and the gauge. So, you must, so that gauge is the rule by which every other pump must measure to that rule. Jesus is the rule. Right. There is nothing else to, there's no other rule. All other rulers must measure up to his rule. Mm -hmm. So he says that if you believe that he is the rule, then you can begin to fix your life by the scriptures. He says, walk in the spirit and you shall not so if you find that you are seeing the flesh in your eyes, then that means that you've not learned how to walk in the spirit. I know they say that once an addict, always an addict, but that's all rubbish. <laughs> once an addict, always an addict, that is no, not that's rubbish. Great. Once an addict, always an addict. It's, it's, such a lie. it's stupid. Yeah, such a lie. If yeah. the word of God is true, I understand the signs. I understand the neurotransmitter, I understand the chemical, I understand the, the, the way, you know, I understand how when you even take some crystal meth, you can open up channels in your brain, yeah. and you can go to psychosis, and even after you study the meth, you still, you, you still see fried sources. I get that, it's true, I, I, understand, I understand how the brain gets tweaked, I, you know, I know that. Mm -hmm. But if Messiah on the cross said by his strength you are healed, then it doesn't matter where the problem is. Even those neurotransmitters, he can fix Anything. Right. It's either he it's either he can fix it or he's a fraud. Yeah. That's let's, right. just, let's, let's just say it. Don't take this word and not take that word. 
says, for them, oh Lord, my, your word is settled in the heavens. It was first unsettled. When this first said, I will be like the most high God. But mm-hmm. so after that time, he's been settled. He can't be changed. Right. It says, you shall not fulfill. That's a blank check. You know, the human mind is funny. We are programmed that, as that guy I told, I told about last session, but I said, I must stop smoking. I must get a new patch. I must do acupuncture. Even though I know that I can open the channels of my body right. to some funny planes, you're not told that, you know? You know, it's actually a religion, you know that? The, the, say again, sorry. It's actually a religion. Yeah, You're opening yeah. up channels to other things. And people don't understand that. Or, or I want to do yoga. Mm-hmm. It's an exercise. It's not an exercise. Come on. Come on. It's not an exercise. I do yoga. It's not an exercise. Oh, it's just an egg. It's, it's not. Each stance has got a meaning to it. Either the monkey stance or the cobra, whatever. Either. Like you are worshipping or posing for something. Yeah. And when you get to the higher realms, then you understand what you're really doing. It's everything is spiritual. Everything is spiritual. It has a spiritual connection. Every everything. Yeah. So I must stop smoking. That's the human programming. I remember Lee that I was, I was this girl that I was years ago who, who had seen so many doctors, so many psychiatrists, I can't remember how many, I think 15 or whatever, whatever. She had seen so many, she been to so many homes. She tried to fix her mind. She used to hear voices and trying to fix her mind. And she was a child of God. She had so many issues. And I was telling her about demons and stuff. Yeah, I don't believe in all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I was, yeah, a doctor. What are you going to do? Well, there's a power chemical problem in my brain that they can't fix. I just need to change my medication and my brain will auto boot. I'll be okay. I thought the doctors have seen this. <laughs> they have seen you. They have not fix it. I need to see another one. I'm sure it's a brain chemical. You've had so many drugs. Yeah, but I think that Okay, so go. And she's still going around. Whatever I saw her about 10 years ago, she's still going around doing, yeah. looking for the doctor that can program the brain with the right chemicals. Of course I believe in chemicals. I believe in the brain. I believe in the drugs. I, I believe in all that kind of stuff. I do. But if you've been trying a long time and you have failed, come try my Jesus. Yes. Let me help you. Come try we can fix it. We can fix this. You can't be over medicated in Jesus. <laughs> no. <laughs> I've been selling atheists for so long, Holy Spirit. No, power. Not <laughs> you cannot be over medicated. Oh, Ray, Ray is over medicated. I used to. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you are over medicated in Jesus. I <laughs> <laughs> so, Okay. So you do it. I always have a little ditty for you. So. Yeah, they overdose, on, but he's, he's still okay. So <laughs> overdose is good for you in Jesus. Amen. Right. <laughs> you know, so that is that is man's programming. But just programming says stop trying to stop. Man says, let me do some more study. Right. Check some more research. Yes. There's gotta be a way out of this. Now I understand and I, I, I'm not against all that. I'm not I'm not against science. I'm definitely not against I'm, I'm just, I mean my Yeah. I'm not you against science. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, but I'm saying that God's programming is that Stop trying to stop. Mm. Just yield to what I've done. Mm-hmm. But we are programmed to fix it. Mm-hmm. You're just saying, say yes to me. For instance, speaking in tongues, mm. which is an argument for a lot of people, right. stop trying to speak in tongues. Just receive it. Mm. Oh, I want to get the Holy Spirit. It's yours already. That's a, that's a good word. It's yours good already. Word. The only people I've ever struggled with are those who have been taught that it is not for them, not for now, not for this. I remember a church. You know, I have, you know, I've got to have a lot, you know, we've got to have a lot of churches. We've done a lot of work with work, mate, around the world, you know. You know, around, around, around we, we will help churches. A lot of people would help. And there was this church in, you know, in BC area with that um, had issues, so... And they are having a move of God going, was, was doing, was doing with people were getting saved. And I said, well, 
why don't we ask them to come in and then talk to them and help them to speak it. receive the Holy Ghost to speak in tongues right. so they have more power to work in the higher level mm -hmm. so uh, we wrote um, a lot of stuff you know a lot of basic traditional stuff a lot of things that would to make them grounded mm -hmm. and the tongues also Right, and then so that was very, it's very needed because people come from witchcraft mm -hmm. and they come to church and they, oh, we love you, we love you, we love you. Come and join us. Mm -hmm. and come, come and sing, come and sing in the band. You want, you want to sing? Right. But you know, you've not touched and dealt with that issue. Yes. So when they come because you love them, that's good. And they accept the ranks, they will destroy the church because that thing they carry is still there. We're playing games. So we have to know that when they come into church, you got to fix those things. So that was given the church to use. And they had that thing for some time. And I said, what's happened? So, oh, the pastors met. And they thought about it. And they said that we must have a struggle, pay a price to speak in tongues. Mm. That they can't just get because it's too cheap to give tongues just like that. Mm -hmm. They have to mature and go through the process and learn and struggle and face and that. And I thought when I got saved, what kept me it was the Holy Spirit. Yeah. If I didn't get the Holy Spirit, I would not have lost it. Right. But he zapped me the very day I walked in. That's God's programming. It says, In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. That is programming. Oh, don't talk about that. That's our programming. Oh, don't believe the blood. That's a cannibalistic religion. Mm -hmm. Those of you in Africa, that's what we hear here. I know you don't Great. believe. You might find it hard to believe. But we're told here that don't believe the blood of Jesus. Oh, no, no, no. Great. That's. That's a violent. Yeah. Don't teach our, our children violent, cannibalistic faith. <laughs> That's what we hear here. Uh -huh. Don't speak in tongues. Ah, what are you speaking? Stop it. Right. Don't cast out devils. Where they? Don't, 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 don't cast out. No, no. That's what, that's what, they, that's what we hear here. Uh -huh. So those, I don't do in Africa. I might get a bit confused, but I'm just trying to explain to you that right. it's a different <laughs> yes. terrain we have sometimes yes. here. That's right. Now let's go deeper and look at the works of the flesh. There are 18 of them, and there are four divisions. There are four sins of lust. There are two sins of impiety and superstition. There are nine sins of temper, and two sins of appetite, ap eating and drinking, making two of, of, of 17 plus one, ex etc. There, there, are, there are 18 gifts of the spirit. Yeah, yeah. There's four sins of lust. There are two sins of impiety and superstition. There are nine sins of temper. Mm. And there are two sins of appetite. That's eating and drinking. Mm. That's from Dick's Bible. Mm. So that's about eight. That's about 17 plus etc. I'm making 18. It says, and such like. So there's no, there's no end to them. Yeah. Once again, there's four sins of lust. Two sins of impiety and superstition. Four of, of two sins of... No, four sins of lust. Four sins of lust. That's and two. Two sins of impiety and superstition. Impiety, impiety. not not being pious. Oh. And to God, that's superstition. Yes. Okay. Nine oh. sins of temper. I know. Trying to have a hard time discerning. And two sins of appetite. Yeah. Making seventeen sins. Um. So the eighteenth one is exoteric and such like. Oh yeah. Like. Okay. So there's four sins of lust. Yes. Of, of impiety and superstition, that's not, that's not against the things of God. And then nine sins of temper, that's number 7 to 15. Isn't that interesting? Eh? And two sins of appetite, it, that's number 16 to 17. Amen. Yeah. Galatians 5 talks about the works of the flesh and manifest. I'm going to go, I'm, you know, I'm. I'm giving a framework today, uh, a background for you to understand what I'm talking about. Because these things are real. 
Mm-hmm. And they are things that we're told are normal, but they're not normal. Yeah. One is called adultery, that's unlawful sexual relationship between men and women, single or married. Mm-hmm. Fornication, sexual immorality, that's similar to that. But I would be to those that are not, that are not married. Mm-hmm. Uncleanness, that's impurity. According to Dix, it includes sodomy, homosexuality, lesbianism, pedestry, bestiality, and all other forms of sexual mm-hmm. perversion. Mm-hmm. That's what God's word says. I know that in people's ideas these days, it's we question that. Mm-hmm. But we are dealing with a God who is an awesome God. This is the word of God. Lasciviousness, that's licentiousness, lasciv- 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 lustfulness, unchastity, and lewdness. Is the promoting or partaking of what of that which tends to produce lewd emotions? What about foster sex, sin, and lusts? That's why many of the world casuals are dangerous. Many of them are dangerous. Many of the, of the worldly pleasures are dangerous. Pleasures, yes. They're very dangerous. And so it's just a brittle thing. It just takes the limits off. It means that there is no limit. Whatever happens in Vegas mm. stays in Vegas. That's that's, that's total release from any 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 that's that's what people are very very lascivious. That's 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 that's, that's the ultimate of lasciviousness. Mm. That I can do whatever I want to do with myself and my body. Mm. Idolatry and that's when you have an image to worship. Yeah. Anything on which our affections are passionately set. It's an extravagant admiration of the heart. Whatever you put before God mm-hmm. is idolatry. That's right. That's right. Whatever you put before God, it might be artists or singers or politicians or leaders yeah. Yeah. who say this is how it should be. Yeah. We say, yes, sir. Great. It's an idol. I tell you a story about my pastor in Nigeria when, I, when we just got saved and they had a pretty good church. The guy is an excellent teacher. But he always wants to go to areas where he shouldn't be going to. He talks about stuff that people don't want to hear about. Right. He exposes darkness. And there's some guys in church who are very wealthy and very, <laughs> very, very matured, you know, very wealthy, you know, very connected men. Right. I mean, wealthy men. And one day after he spoke, they went to her, he says, <laughs> Come in, Pastor. You are, you are saying some things you shouldn't be mentioning in church. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Please stop saying these things. Don't like them. Uh-huh. <laughs> he says, We don't like them. If you continue, we will pack our things and leave this church with all our money. Right. We'll go. <laughs> Bye-bye. Young pastor says that. And he was in the about, I think it was in the 30s or whatever it was. He says, says, Sirs, yes, I respect you. And I understand what you're saying. And your choice to leave, I respect. And the day you leave and the church collapses, I will come and look for you and worship you because you must be God. And I chose the wrong master. Good answer. What is it? They were so angry. And they packed the stuff and left the church. <laughs> and the money. And men who were nothing, who had never been to school, mm-hmm. started opening shops. Shop in posh streets, making money. The money just kept uploading because he refused to bow to who or what thought they were God. So if they said, ah, please, sir, I will not do it again, that's his at all. And that will control him yeah. for the rest of his life. Mm-hmm. We have to decide sometimes that we will not serve mm-hmm. idols. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Amen. The can be an idol. Thou shalt do this. Yes, sir. But God's will say that. I don't, no, 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 don't rock the boat. They might cancel you. Yeah, go ahead. You cancel your very enterprise. Your very, your very, very organization. I can shut it down. So when you say things, God will move and take out organizations and companies and 
whatever you are, and even governments, he has the control of whatever, whatever, whatever this world has. And when we face him in heaven, he'll ask us what we, what we have done with the breath he gave us. The way we that who today is a big shot will be in the fire. And we are going to face God and get rewards based on what we have done concerning his word. If we are shaken because of what somebody says, and we totally say yes, sir, for what we know is not from God, but we are afraid, then we are going to face the master one day. We shall all bow before his will sit. Amen. And they'll say, what have you done? The people today, even in Nigeria, the people who are there in villages and villages, and they go and cut women who are pregnant, they cut up from their, their very take out the ladies and kill them and kill and kill and kill and kill, all in the name of a religion that they feel that that is the faith. They're jihadists that go and destroy things for the sake of their God. And Christians don't bow, and they actually get killed. And you're going to stand before God with them. Who, those who say, I will, not, I will not change my religion, and they die for that. They're matured for Jesus. And you're going to face God and receive a reward. And those ones are going to... So what are you going to get? When you can say, mm, I'm not going to do that because God will say so. And, 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 what, and then compared to those who have given their lives... You see, time is a little bit out of eternity. Mm. God takes time out of eternity mm. for us to use. And if you compute how many how many hours your very breath is, if you live to a hundred, if you live, 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 live to a hundred years, God says a thousand a thousand years is as one day in my sight. Mm. So if you live for a hundred years, that's a tenth of a day. Imagine a tenth of a tenth of today. What have you done? Two hours for whatever. Two hours for whatever. You know, you know a tenth of today. Mm -hmm. Two point four, whatever it is. Right. It, it must be two hours and maybe forty-five or forty minutes, whatever it is. But it's, what have you done? You know, even to get from Winnipeg to Brandon, it's about two hours. Whatever, about two hours. You know, I, I, I don't speak. Really, yeah. No, I know she does it one and a half hours, one hour. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she got a heavy foot. <laughs> oh, she like a big growl. <laughs> but you know, you know, you know, and you look at that time. That's your whole life, God. In that time. And we are messing up. Witchcraft. Mm. Sorcery. Practicing of dealing with evil spirits. Yeah. Magical incantation and casting spells. Mm -hmm. You know, in those days they used to use a lot of drugs <laughs> to get people manipulated. Even today. I believe that some things we see in medical science, like dimensions and stuff, are due to people who have been even poisons and stuff can make you change. Yeah. Amen. I had an, an, a, 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 one of my old aunties, my father's um, sister or so, he said, I'm this lady, older, late, late, a long time ago. When I was very young, she said something about one, one man. She says, Ah, that man, they are cooked because this guy used to like to go around all the ladies. They said to have the symptoms. He said, ah, uh -uh. they cooked the head of a duck for him. And that never left my, my mind. Head of a duck. Mm. Ah, they cooked. So this, this is how people from the interior who understand the pharmacia pharma, pharma or the witchcraft. And then when I got into medicine, I started to learn about some things about dog's head and all that. So I thought, oh, about, about, about the dog's head and dog's brain and stuff that can happen. And I thought, oh, oh yeah. Maybe, maybe they knew what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. And so I realized that the witchcraft we're talking about is not just flying in, in the sky. They're right. manipulating people with right. questions and stuff to get them into trouble. Yes. Hatred means a bitter dislike, abhorrence, malice, ill will, holding grudges, being angry. Variance means dissensions. Discord, quarreling, debating, and disputes. <laughs> Emulations means envies also, jealousies, trying to excel at the expense of another person. Mm. You just look at them and say, I, I hate you. I mean, it's good to excel, 
but it's at the expense of somebody else. Try to surpass others and outdo others. Mm. It's a wild very spirit. I'll get a bigger church. I'll do it by cost to get a bigger church. I'll sell my soul. I'll go and get a cattle I put it under my chest. So I say, D, you all fall down, <laughs> even though, you know, by the powers of darkness. Because there's a rivalry to have a bigger church. Have a better church. Mm. That's emulation. It's wrath, humus. It's a turbulent passion. That heat. Boom! Explosive. Explosive wrath. Determined and lasting anger. Strife. Disputations. Juggling. Arguing about words. Contentions. Trying to be equal or trying to pay back in time the wrongs done for us. Strife. That's strife. Seditions, it means parties and factions, divisions. You know, you know, there's strife. You know, we, we, we are different, so we are, we are separated. We are, we are different. Heresies, it's choosing like a sect. It just means that having a different opinion. Mm. And so, in, in, in you know, in Christianity, it means that having a different opinion to what Jesus says. Oh. Oh. That's good. Yeah. It becomes evil mm-hmm. when sound doctrine is rejected right. and fallacy is accepted and taught in preference to sound doctrine. Right. Then that's a heresy. Because we reject the doctrine of God and envy is pain, ill will, and jealousy of the good fortune of the blessings of another. Murders, you know what murder is to kill, spoil, and mouth the happiness of another person. If I murder, let me say that again. Murder is to kill, to spoil. Or mark the happiness of another person. Drunkenness, even intoxicated, a slave to drinks, and today we can say drugs also. Yes. Revel, re, re, revelings, lascivious and boisterous feastings with obscene music, loud, boogie, party till the day goes down, mm-hmm. pleasures, noisy parties, and drugs and all that stuff, mm-hmm. and such like. You know, that was a, a very meaty, meaty talk that part was. But, <clears throat> you know, when you look at those those things, those um, 18 things I just talked about in the quick, quick show, it's ridiculous that we're supposed to be free of all those things. There's something that we always do. It might be, there are a lot of things that we do that we don't know that it's actually a flesh also. Yeah, you might not fornicate or adultery or, 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 or you're probably not a Christian, you're not a Christian maybe, you're not a cocaine or whatever it is, but you do some things. Maybe you want your church to be the biggest church you fight for. Maybe you get angry. Maybe you, you divide people, you divide your church, you divide stuff. Maybe you, what do you do? You know, let me tell you a common, a common irritating question. I don't know if you have ever had that question before. It says, hi, how are you doing? Hi, 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 what's up? I have news for you. Oh, mm. what's the news? What do you prefer? What do you mean? You want the bad news or the worst news? Which one do you want? The bad one or the worst one? I hate those questions. Yes, indeed. I hate them. So if you look at what we just read this now, mm-hmm. I've got news for you. <laughs> it says you are not to do them that's bad enough <laughs> and it says don't do anything just stop them Mm-mm-mm. that's crazy okay. don't do that but don't try and fix it mm-hmm. keep that break how can I not do it <laughs> how can I not fix it you're putting me in trouble yeah. that's bad news and worse news don't get angry. But don't try and not get angry. Hmm. <laughs> Come on. And that guy said, don't stop trying to stop smoking. Hmm. You crazy? I want to stop smoking. Yeah, but stop trying. I should stop trying to stop smoking. Are you crazy? Yeah. yeah. Stop trying to stop smoking. Amen. Trying to avoid this is going to be very, very overwhelming. Very, very tiring. And I um, just wanted to take a break now and then have a bit of break and 
have done. It can be very, very overwhelming. We'll, 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 we'll take a break shortly. But what is more daunting is looking at what we ought to conform to. So, one bad news is that don't do this. Another news is that don't try and stop it. Then the more difficult, the, 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 the more difficult means is you go to chapter 5 of Galatians, verse 22 to 23. Where there are nine things listed that we should have. He says, Love, Sakapi. The good kind of love that lays down its life for other people. Joy. Chara. That talks about ex emotional excitement. Gladness. Always delightful. Peace. Quietness. Rest. Security in the midst of turmoil. In the midst of strife. In the midst of temptations. The peace of God. The calmness in the storm. How can I have those kind of things? Long suffering. Even the word itself scares us. Long suffering. <laughs> right? You must have. So, and it's talking about patient endurance. Macrotumia. Patient endurance. To bear along with the frailties of. I said that properly. It says, to bear along. With the frailties, the offenses, the injuries, and provocations of others. Mm -hmm. Is that bad enough? Mm -hmm. It says, without murmuring, or resentment, mm -hmm. or pining. Mm -hmm. This is all from dates. It says, to bear love with the frailties, offenses, injuries, and provocations, without murmuring, Pining or being resentful. Gentleness. Being gentle, soft spoken, kind, even tempered, cultured and refined in character and conduct. Goodness, instead of being good, kind, virtuous, benevolent, generous, and godlike in life and conduct. Faith. So are being faithful, being trustworthy, always there, dependable, meekness, being gentle, being kind, even balancing our tempers and passions, patient in suffering, without feeling a spirit of revenge. We get injuries, but we don't feel a spirit of revenge. That's crazy. Temperance, self-control, and moderation and indulgence of the appetites and passions. Against such there is no law. So he lists nine fruits. And I will ask us to do something. I want us to stand up. Because I have been standing. John me standing up. Let's do something quickly. I want you to do something for me. We'll have an experiment, a lab. A lab. It's an experiment. It's a scientific. It's scientific. I want you just as you are right now. Ready? Ready? I'm ready. Ready? I want you to smile. Smile? Smile. Come on. I want to have the biggest. You're just smiling. Smile. Your last I guess. Smile. Just get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Ah. 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 You good? Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now I want you to know, ready? I want you to mm. This guy kind of afraid. <laughs> 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 mm. <laughs> Which one is easier for you? What's more difficult? Uh, Which one is more of your muscles? Oh, your no, it's right, uh, yeah. it's Which one? Uh, 
Let me sit down. Let me sit down. Let me sit down. Let me sit down. So, the walking is more difficult. Yeah. We'll take a break shortly. But, before we do, God has a way he does things. Like in David and Goliath, he, he takes, asks us to take stones of faith and throw it at the target. Faith always throws stones. See, works takes a constant inventory, analyzing, but often never living forward, moving forward. When we have works, we are constantly analyzing our situation, but we never actually get forward. If somebody is involved, for instance, in addiction as a drug addict, he says, what can I do? Oh, God, okay, let me try. I'll try methadone. And you can go say, no, it's not good. I'm going to move to the Cadian. No, I want some oxygen. No, I want some blockade. But I'm still, I still, what I, I'm like constantly trying to, and sometimes we don't really, really move forward. And sometimes we do because we have a lot of nice drugs these days. But really, we don't fix the problem. We medicate and feel better. But the key is not always fixed. Gideon was a man, you can see how God used him. How he had an army, he had, he had, he had a war. It was a bad enough case. It was like worse and worse. He had to face an army who were terrible fighters. Those Midianites were very bad guys. They wipe you out to take all that you have. They are very, very terrifying. He had an army. And God says, the army is too much. Ask those who don't want to fight, who are afraid to go. And 10,000, boom, just go. And the guy is cut down to nothing. God says, number two, take them to the street. Let's see what they're going to do. He then says, wait, what, what's happening? God? This, this is all I have left. Just, just go, 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 take okay. And watch them. There's where I drink water and water. So Gideon could not tweak the, the, he could not tweak the result. Because he had no idea what God was going to tell them to do. He couldn't fix the result. He couldn't cheat. <laughs> so they got there, and some of them just dropped all their weapons. <laughs> the others knelt down. And were watching as they, they were hunters, warriors. You don't drop your soul. Even when you're feeding your thirst. And so, it was cut down. And we hear it was about between 1 to 1, 4, 5, 4, 4, 4, 4 15. So if they went to battle, one soldier would have to kill at least 450 Midianites mm. for them to have a chance of winning. So that was an impossible battle. He has basically already won, lost. He, was, he had lost. But God said, now you're ready to go and fight. If God gives you a dream, if God gives you a dream, the odds are, the odds are against you. If God gives you, this is what he told me to tell you, that if he gives you a dream, the odds are that the odds are against you. So here we have nine foots and 18 works. One stone kills both birds. The angel says, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. So, the solution to this, as I said, is that we have to understand how God moves the agenda. The Exodus 5 says that 17, that for the flesh lost against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would but if you be led of the spirit you are not allowed under the law, I beg your pardon you see, if you allow the spirit of God 
hidden the law saying, Thou shalt not. The highest law is a law of love. The highest law is a law of love. How do we solve our issues with the fruits? This is what I should do over a weekend. But I try to compress it to a couple of hours today. Usually we take a lot, a lot long, longer breaks and we spend time and, and do a lot of work. But what's the solution? Galatians 5.24 says, They that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the loss and affections. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let's not the desires of vainglory provoking one another and envying one another. So the solution to the problem starts in deciding to walk in the Spirit. As we go on break right now, a longer break, David carefully picked the stones, small stones, part of the kill. Assume that as you take a break now, that you are part of a group where you are clinic, and people come to you all the time. I want you to imagine which stones of the fruits will knock out the the works of the flesh. So write it down somewhere that what of this fruits can knock out the works of the flesh. We'll go and break right now and then we shall um, complete the session. The next session will be the last session. But let's take a let's take a longer break then and we can complete we can do the session next. So right now as we are break just we need to figure out what of which of my which of these things in Galatians, which of these fruits, the love, joy, gentleness, goodness, can, can I believe God to receive? Because you are, you are, you are now beginning to receive the, the, the positive, and you want to, as you receive the positive, what will kill the negative? So if it's adultery and fornication, maybe it's a love. If you love somebody, you are now lost. Love gives. Loss takes. So when you love somebody, those will not be part of your life. So what of those things, which thing of those fruits of the spirit do I need to apply or tell somebody to come who comes to me for help? What do I need to tell them to apply against the works of the flesh? I like to have your ideas. After break, just write down somewhere that what would I do? What would I tell them if they have this problem? What of that should I tell them to do? We have a chat for this also that helps people to know what to do. But right now, let's go and break and we'll talk again after the break. God bless you. I hope this helped you a little bit. It's very, very meaty, but tomorrow will be much more. But this is very, very meaty, so it's, it's just it's hard to use it. It's it is. Is there any more? But they said, God bless you. Talk to you later. We take about 20 minutes break. Uh, for part two. Part two. Yeah. Yeah. Coffee and muffins.